Look, it's um, Piero. Piero made a really good showing recently at Capcom at uh, Co-op Cup. This is him playing casuals against Venal. Look, look, it's Venal. Look, it's it's Piero. This is the God Remy. The Devil Remy, perhaps. Remy hates this. Remy gets dizzy real fast. It doesn't take Remy to have very much prior stun at all. Nice combo. He got a high connect. Uh, his combo options were a little limited. I don't think he could go to low, low strong because he got a kind of high connect jump fierce. Commentate over Tasses. Provide my own commentary. I don't know how most Tasses do stuff they do. That could have been several jabs into a flash kick, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know if he had down charge time. He started with a low parry. But enough low parry into three jabs gives you enough time to charge a flash kick. Probably does. Flash kick is pretty good in here. Ooh, got the link. I saw that frame. I personally... Oh, he got... Yum! Crash Fierce on... I think it might... I don't know when it works and when it doesn't. Um... Crash Fierce can go into Cold Blue Kick, which can then go into Flash Kick. And it seems to work mid-screen, but um, doing on a grounded opponent, Crash Fierce into Cold Blue Kick is either impossible or character-specific. Or, like, it, it wor it's either really precise or character-specific. What I'm saying is, is it's either really, really hard, or it's just outright impossible on some characters and hard on other characters. But that was a mid-air connect, so made easier. That dungeon was kind of far away, so it was hard to make it really work. That's supposed to be close medium kick. Let me want a close medium kick, and then he wanted to link super. But he got a far medium kick, so it looked awkward. I don't know if I would necessarily call this a bad match. It's like, okay. It's probably like a 6-4, or maybe like a 5.5, 4.5. It's probably not that bad for Remy. Ryu is a better character than Remy, and Dungeon does a little bit of work against Remy specifically. Because he's unusually easy to dizzy, which means you can go for the grimy setups easier. Like, Remy, the, Re, Ryu needs the opponent to have a lot of prior dizzy before he goes for, like, DP cancel to Dungeon, which is very hard to do anything about. But he, um, with Remy, uh, having a lot of prior stun basically means landing, like, one overhead, or, like, two, like, like one knockdown. One combo. Is that Crouch Fierce into Close Fierce? Explain this. Alright, got that mix up. That's super scary. He parried immediately. Or maybe not immediately, but pretty fast. If Ryu delayed his fireball, Remy would have been parry lock. And if you're in parry lock, you're not in a good position when it comes to um, tension. It's a 50 50, basically. Remy's forward dash is actually pretty fast. Same with Ryu. Ryu's is actually one of the fastest in the whole game. Yeah, see, that was like that's one of the grimy setups. It's really, really crazy hard to get out of that. By the time you block the DP, and chances are you block the DP, you need to red parry the uh, uh, dungeon. And the downside of that setup is the dungeon has to be a very low charge dungeon. It has to be like a level one or level two. So those are unsafe on hit. So if you uh, eat that dungeon, you then punish Ryu. But um, if you get dizzy, of course it's of course it's safe on hit if you get dizzy. And it's unblockable, so you've got to go for like a post freeze red parry that's very hard to time. It's not fun. But Re Ryu needs some prior dizzy. But like, it's not much prior dizzy in this matchup. That's like exactly what I was talking about. He might do it right now. He did not. Nice. Remy, it was like a anyone's game there. If Ryu landed like. Maybe not a throw, but like there are a lot of things where you, if you landed them, he got a dizzy instantly, and then the kill combo is very easy. This is the bottom. Look, I don't know. That one's like this has to do with talking. I don't know what exactly there these kanji are, but I'm I'm guessing it says commentary. I get the feeling this is commentary. That's Ricky Maru. That's Yakun. These are like two well-known players on commentary. Ricky Maru is only Yakun is Yon. Ricky Maru's, I think Ricky Maru's fat, if memory serves. Maru means, like, ball. It's used a lot in names. But, like, I, I, for some reason, it's always stuck with me. Like, you know, a ball is round and a fat guy is round. 
I'm just like very appropriate. Mario's like circle, perhaps. Look at that deep ass stain fierce. You might be wondering what the hell the mix up is. Ooh, it dropped. With a uh, meaty stain fierce. And the short answer is down parry. Ooh, that. Mm. It's interesting that he reacted. I would have done. I would have been looking for stain fierce into super. Well, I, honestly, I would have been looking for low strong into super. Um, but it's weird that he did the stain fierce, which doesn't auto confirm. I think. I think if you do it, you you know, if you want to combo out of it, you just gotta cancel straight away. Maybe he was trying for a stain fierce boom super, or something like that. And he missed his boom. The stain fierce was like not quite in time though. The really annoying thing about Remy is that anterior flash kick, or like any flash kick, um, does not combo properly into any super. Alex's super, uh, command grab's got more damage, yeah, if memory serves. It's like nice, I guess. More damage is good. Remy's not a good comeback character. The TC. Remy has a couple TCs. You don't see them very often. After a stand medium kick, stand hard kick is optimal damage unless you have um, a super. Throw tech into Remy forward dash into another throw. You can you have to you have to block um, Yik's low fireball low, but you can actually parry it higher low, which is kind of strange. See, Remy was in parry lock there. He actually shook out. And also the hits of, if you're close range, the hits of Remy's EX Fireball hit so close together that a single parry will dispel both. Because they hit within one frame of each other. This footage is not super recent, by the way. It's from 2013. Public kick is like minus on hit and block, I think. I think the higher strength ones might be just outright unsafe. But it's actually, I don't know. All of them are minus just a bit. I don't know how unsafe they are. Sometimes I feel like they're unsafe and I do stand strong and, and it just works every time. And then every now and then the Remy will just block the stand strong and it's like, why did, how did he block it? Did I mistime it? Or like, can Remy always block? But usually Remy's aren't blocking. No, he went for it. He went for big, 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 big boy damage. That was a weird. Um, he did a. Uh, he had a better combo than the um, low boom he did in his combo, and I think he thought he was going to build super, but didn't quite. Remy's meter build is all fucked. Remy builds like really low meter compared to most characters. He's got okay supers. They're not great. His ex moves are also okay. It's not like meters like make or break for him. But it's just not fair. He'd like to be able to throw more EX booms. EX flash kicks are, I mean, they're nice. From what we saw in Capcom Cup, they can do a lot of work. That might require a Kara. I mean, he has a Kara on towards medium kick. So you've got to charge down and then do towards medium kick and then do up plus kick. So that's kind of a weird, that's a weird, that's a hard card to do. He actually needs to do that to do um, neutral throw into a flash kick on some cornered opponents. Oro is one of them. It's very hard to do a uh, corner throw into a flash kick on Oro. Because that's already a somewhat precise flash kick. And you've got to do it one frame later because of the Kara. And also you've got to nail a hard Kara. Did not shake out. Oh. Remy's punish damage is not super high. I mean, he's not super damaging in general. Good night, crookie. Damn, I haven't played you in Marble in a minute. Should we play? Like tomorrow or sometime soon? Get him? Got him. 
That gets first and third in anti-air scenarios. In flash kick, I've canceled from flash kick. It's even weaker than that. I think it does get first and third if cancels from flash kick. It's not a very strong super even on full connect. For like a DP super with as much meter cost as it does, you think it would be a lot stronger. It's not weak, but it's just not super rewarding, and most of the combos into it are very short. Kareen. I have a dank new team. It's um, strong ish. I'm surprised Remy went for the double parry and then still did um, jump, like not jump fierce. Corner throw into a short juggle is very cool. I'm surprised that didn't stay. I always thought I always liked that. KF13 had that on like three characters: Chin and Kenso and Andy. I forget who the other one was. Then they removed that as well. Man, it wasn't Andy, was it? Who the hell was it? It was like another character. My. I feel like it wasn't my. I don't remember who the hell it was. Joe? Oof. I think it's time to put Alex up for adoption. This is not a super hard parry, but um, it's depending on the height, you can either parry the first couple and then hit the ground and shift to blocking, or parry the first couple and then the second one hits you still midair. That was the second one. Ri was probably blocking there. He probably anticipated to land, but he didn't land in time. You've got you've to eyeball it. you got to see where you're parrying, where, how high you are when you're parrying. It's a scenario that most people probably aren't ready for because how often do you really fight a Remy? Much less a Remy who does something disrespectful like anti or super. Respect is such an important concept in Street Fighter 3. That's a fairly easy parry if you've already parried. If you haven't already parried, it's a little bit harder. The thing is, Remy's super is really fast, which gives you very little time post freeze to parry it. But the thing is, in anti air scenario, you're probably not going to be hit on the first frame, or even the first few frames. That was a car throw, neutral grab. That's quite hard to do with Remy. That's a lot harder than it looks. So that's towards medium kick, carry, par, uh, card into just a uh, throw with, without forward. So he has a very, he has to very precisely release forward on the frame between the medium kick and the throw. It's a lot harder than it sounds. It doesn't help that much. It gives you a little bit of extra damage on the throw that you can combo out of. Oof. That stun could be a factor. That's that really isn't really No, it's not it's not a, it's it is an evaluation you need to make in Street Fighter Five, but not as hard. That off combo, I think. That requires very precise charging and also kind of a specific range, I think. That was really cool. I don't remember if the range matters because Remy doesn't have fireball law. The rule is that you can only have one fireball on the screen at a time, but naturally Remy's EX fireballs just break that automatically. And also, um, Remy does have the fireball law. He can't throw a high fireball and have another high fireball on the screen, and he can't throw a low fireball and have another low fireball on the screen. But there's no law about f high fireballs and low fireballs. You can have a high and throw a low. You can throw, have a low and throw a high. And that's why Remy's always alternate fireballs. Nice whiff punish. Remember those? 
Remember when whiff punishing was a mechanic? Whoa, Ryu. I thought he was gonna kill. Oh no. In respectful, try again, dude. Try dis. The fuck, in respectful. Not even unrespectful. Fucking. In. In respectful. That's right. Is this some magic word that I've never heard of? Does that mean like do not no regard to respect? Whoa, I went too far. Did I just learn a new word? Someone like dictionary this. I never heard of that shit. Nice parry, nice punish. Ryu's main draw over Ken is that Ryu's damage from a parry is higher than Ken's. Unless, of course, you can do double DPs. So that's like if if uh, Remy blocks the DP, Ryu just releases the dungeon immediately and he gets a dizzy. But if Remy eats the DP, then Ryu charges the dungeon a little bit and then releases. That looked like a punish, right? That had the appearance of a punish. That had the appearance of a very unsafe attack, and Ryu threw it, and throws her fast. Those are three frames in this game. Two frames start up, then active. Those are good in this game because they serve an important mix-up, but they feel way stronger in four. What's the big shift? What was it that made throws feel stronger in four? It's probably the pushback. You can quick stand throws in this game. But not even that. It feels like throws have high priority in 4. It's not that crouch techs are crouch jabs instead of crouch shorts. It's not that throws can be quick stood. It might be the damage of throws. I don't know, they're pretty low in both games. Damage and throws in this game is, like, I think lower than Street Fighter 4 proportionally, the total health. I think. It might be throw range. I feel like it's throw range. I feel like throws and 4 just universally go farther. It's pushback of, like, it's like, okay, I think I know what it is. It's like, um, uh, the throws are the same speed. Walk speed's really good in this game, too. Those are three frames in both. I think it's that, like, um, crouch jab, crouch jab, walk and throw is, like, not a thing in this game. By two crouch jabs, you've just pushed the opponent way too far out that you can reasonably walk in and throw them. Yeah, wake up throwing vulnerability helps, too. There's a lot of ways that they made those way better in Street Fighter 4. I won't say they had to, but definitely throws... Throws didn't have to be like throws didn't have to be super good for people to use them in this game because there's such a big part of the core mix up because throws are like one of the only ways to blow up either parry like 100% reliably. It's just that throws are not super rewarding and parry is super rewarding so people still parry quite a lot. And of course there are a lot of scenarios where throwing is not an option but parrying is like mid range quarter screen. If you're if you're at a range where you can parry like a far medium kick and you know, they can't throw you. What are they gonna do to prevent you? Um oh I didn't even respond to that. I just thought of things. Karine is uh, one of the most defensive characters. She's not a bad rushdown character, too. She's very safe. Not a great mix-up. It's okay. It's good enough. Low strong is a good normal, and throwing is fine. But that's, like, her whole mix-up. Well, she's got mean mix-ups, too. She's got, like, Tenko's... I mean, not what you call it. Um, Wuji Kaku stuff. And V-Trigger stuff. But that's, like, mostly memes. Um, 
Um, she's, I don't know. She's a character that I probably should, like, play more than I do. She is a wait and watch character. And she is more defensive than most of the cast. Ryu was going ham with the um, parries there. I saw that. The ways that he moved. People start doing really strange movement options at low health. Because they can't stand at certain ranges or else they can get chipped out at a bit random timing. Every single time you get in, it's still a fucking 33, 33, 33, and 5. The mix-up is still very, very pure. Between, like, throw and, like, slightly delayed frame trap and, like, immediate frame trap. Very, very few ways out of that mix-up. And it happens anytime you're close. Uh, based on who hits the button when. And if you're both trying to hit buttons first, then that's a mix-up scenario too. Maybe not a mix-up scenario per se. Throws being less rewarding definitely doesn't mean that people won't go for throws. It probably means that th people will go for throws more. If anything. Because it means people are going to respect throws even less than they already do. People already hold that back in Street Fighter Five and don't take throws. That was another car, a neutral grab. Very hard to do. Oof, that was kind of a bad jump over. <gasps> Yo, that was smart as fuck. I didn't think he could get over that. And not only did he get over it, but he got he couldn't get a full jump in combo. Cause he was Ryu was gonna recover. EX Fireball recovers pretty quickly. So what he did was an early connect jump hard kick, which was gonna punish the fireball, and then he landed and needed a super, which is fast enough to combo from an early jump hard kick. Because super's two frames. That was super, super, super duper intelligent. That was like a very, very smart decision. Low key. That was smarter than it looked, and it looked smart. Oh, Re Remy. But that was a ham. You guys see that? Was he doing a DP then? Uh oh. That was a punish. Not a whole lot of time to combo out of an anti air fireball. It's got high JP, I think. I don't remember if you air flip after eating an anti-air fireball, or if you get hard knockdown. I feel like you air flip, so he had to hit with that dungeon before. Well, he could have charged it a little bit and then still hit the air flip. There's part during an air reset. There's a little part of it where you're invincible to hits, but before and after it, you can get eats hits of super. Was that a dash into a low fireball? That was kind of clean. I want to see that again. That was clean. That was charge positioning right there. <laughs> nice little dash fireball. Very cool. Remy benefits somewhat from charge partitioning. Urian benefits a lot. Aura benefits almost not at all. Uh, who else can even charge? Chun-Li benefits almost not at all. No, Chun-Li basically benefits not at all from charge partitioning. Chun-Li only has one charge move. Alex benefits a smidge. It can be kind of surprising to be blocking a... To be forced to block a um, EX slash elbow after Alex like forward dashes or something. That can catch you off guard very easily. Or like dash and stomp. It's got a little bit of utility. Not worthless. That was a red parry. What the fuck? For now. Parried the D the fireball and then DP'd. He was probably looking for fireball into cold blue kick chip out. Probably. That would make sense. And he didn't want to have to parry the chip out, so we went for the DP to beat it, I guess. I don't know. But even after explaining it like that, it still sounds kind of sketchy. It sounds like something you wouldn't necessarily do. Bit of an awkward jump. Oh, look at that hitbox. The hard one goes pretty high up. They have nice... Cold Blue Kick has a really nice incidental hitbox. Um, people will take the throw, but that doesn't mean people will stop throwing. The mix-up's still intact, it's just less rewarding. If anything, if people take the throw, then like throws are going to start happening way more. Mix-up's not dead. I forget that that works. So Flash Kick comes out a little slower than Super, so you've got a little bit of time to walk in before a Super. And conveniently, you can do a buffered motion. You can do down forward, down forward, hold the forward a little bit, and then hit kick a little late. 
That's what we just saw right there, a walk-in super. Raw super, I think, is a little too far away to hit properly. But if you do wa walk-in super, it's not crazy hard. And it adds hits and damage. That doesn't do significantly more damage than just juggling the flash kick. <laughs> That's the sad thing about Remy. It's stronger if you need it to get the extra hits and kill. That was a punish settler short. He could have done something a little meaner, but he didn't have charge, so he couldn't have done something way meaner. He probably could have gotten low strong, but there was no end. There was no ender. Nothing combos from that low strong. What was that button? Come strong. <gasps> But I might die for that. Another car neutral throw. Piero? That's amazing. That one was a failed one, I think. Yeah, chip out. Oh, he got it, too. The first parry is the hardest one. After you get the first parry, you're in a good situation. The problem is he mi he whiffed some hits of the initial DP. And um, because of that, uh, Renau might have not known how many hits to parry. I think it's 3, then 3, then parry until you stop parrying. You don't need to know the number of hits for the last one because you can just keep on parrying until it's done and then just reaction reaction combo. I haven't parried that in a fuck long time. You only need to parry it if you're right about to get chipped out. I guess if you're jumping in on it. Pretty sure it's 3, then 3, then keep on parrying until it's done. Dudley, Dudley's super one might depend on the character, but I think that one's two, then two, then three, I think. Yeah, two, then two, then three. I don't know how much show you Repa. You'll never ever see that one. I like to know the parry numbers for some supers, but not all of them. It depends on how practical parrying it is. Sean Lee's is, uh, I think, 17 on RO. The number of parries depends on what character. Two hits whiff on Shoto's, so Shoto's only need to parry 15 times. But that makes it arguably a little harder because there's a stagger. There's always a stagger when she changes legs. But it, for Shoto's, it's like dot, 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 dot. It's like dot, 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 pause, dot, 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 like that. Dot, 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 dot. It's like that. And then you, she, sw she switches legs and then she does the same sequence again. And then there's a long pause and then there's the final parry. You feel like a chump if you miss the final parry, I'll tell you that. Especially if you parry the rest of it. I've parried the first eight hits of a chun -Li Super in a match before. I parried the first eight and then I just interrupted with Stand Strong. It was a very poorly set up Super. It was very obvious. He like just did it meaty on my wake up and I, as I had like low health. Meanwhile, many, many times I've, whiffed, I've missed the parry on the final hit. I don't mess that up very often. I almost always get it. But it's the worst feeling on earth. When you fucking eat that. The thing about Chun-Li Super is that it scales a lot. Like the hits, like, there's 17 hits, 16 hits before the final kick. So that you get to a decent amount of scaling by the final kick. Hi. And that means they had to make the final kick pretty strong to still do okay damage at the end of that super. And when you eat that final kick raw while trying to parry it, it does a butt ton. It does like a fucking... Well, it's not a whole lot, but it's like, um... It's like as much as Remy's is missing right now in just that final hit. It's like, ow, when you eat it. It hurts. Nice punish. Um, when you say Denjin charged, what exactly do you mean? If you do DP into Denjin, you can get like a one or... No, you like, like a one-hit Denjin while they're still going up. That's like it. If you have to charge Denjin at all, it won't combo from the DP. If you want to do DP and then just keep on mashing the charge of Denjin, that is absolutely a thing on hit and block. Oof. If you do DP on block into Denjin, you just release the Denjin immediately. And that's usually awful because it's very unsafe, but if it diseases the opponent, it's amazing. Um... If you dungeon, uh, if you do deep into dungeon and you see that it hits, then you can spin that stick. 
Charge a full dungeon. You can literally get a full dungeon by the time they're waking up, and they'll wake up directly into it. And then the thing about dungeon, full dungeon, it's a very easy parry in that context. Because they just parry as soon as they wake up. You can't hold it much longer than that. And you wouldn't anyway. But the trick is, um, uh, with a full dungeon, it takes a really long time to parry. It's like five hits or something. Like six. Something like that. Um, so you can like dash in and hit you with a low forward as you're parrying the dungeon. And that low, parrying a low forward while parrying a dungeon is kind of nightmarish. It'll usually open open you up because you can vary the timing a lot, and just it's a hard parry because you don't know if it's going to be like you know you don't know whether it's going to be like you don't know how it's going to stagger with your existing parries. There's a maximum parry speed. It's like, when you parry, like, let's say, a Ryu Super 1, it'll be like, dot, 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 dot. That's, like, approximately the speed of, like, um, max of, of like as fast as something can make you parry it. But the thing is, that's because each time you parry something, you're freezing it for a few frames. And it'll, un once it unfreezes, you have to parry it again. It's, like, 16 frames or something like that. So the parries will be, like, once every 16 frames. Um, but the thing about, it freezes you and the thing you're parrying. So if you're parrying a fireball and Ryu runs up to you, you're not freezing Ryu with each parry. You're only freezing the fireball. So the parries can get really close together if some of them are the fireball and some of them are Ryu. It'd be like dot, da 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 like that. Or like dot, da 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 like that. It could be any of these timings, and that makes it really hard to actually nail. Especially, I think you have to parry Denjin high and Ryu low forward, you have to parry low, which makes it more annoying. A lot of supers you can parry low or high. I don't think Dungeon is one of them. There are some attacks that are multiple different projectiles, like Ibuki Super 1, which you have to parry really, really fast, because parrying them doesn't freeze any individual kunai. And also, uh, Oro's Sun, while it looks like a very big single projectile, is actually like a million little projectiles, so you have to parry it like crazy fast. Nice punish. Parrying or EX Super 3, or EX Super 2 is actually crazy difficult. Like, it's very easy to see it coming at you. It's very easy to get the first parry. But parrying fast enough and at the right rhythm is actually harder than it sounds. It's not like crazy, crazy hard, but it's alarmingly fast. There's a lot of parries. You have to parry like fucking like like 15 hits if you're in the thick in the middle of it. It's like oh da 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 da. It's like that, really quick. It's faster than that. But you can see for most attacks, the thing you're parrying, and uh, is a very constant rhythm. Like Chun Li lightning legs. Some people are going for that. When you watch Chun Li light, lightning legs whiff. It's so fast. She whiffs like uh, eight hits in like fucking a nanosecond. The taunt. No respect. But when you're actually parrying Chun Li's lightning legs, it's like dot, 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 dot. It's like that. Yeah, here we go. Let's get a live Oro Sun parry. That's not as fast as I remember. Oh, this video's over. Alright, this one looks mad cool. It's Matsuken versus Sugiyama. Damn, the sub. Thank you. Where's the noise? I want to hear the noise. Is the noise on? Twitch alert says on. Whatever, man. I'm surprised I'm a person who people sub to. I'm like honored. I didn't think that that many people would sub, considering how hard I even had to work to even get a sub button. I always thought I was just like a nobody from nowhere. Sasugiyama, I love me a good necro. Necro has to be concise about his attacks. 
Most of Necro's attacks in a vacuum take a bigger risk than they have a reward. His damage is pretty good in combos. His damage on errant hits is very low. Favorite nobody. That's all I've ever wanted in life. I love that trouble. You need a pretty high connect down back fierce. Ah, that's the red parry that makes Necro's life miserable. St. Fierce is more consistent there. I've been playing with that idea ever since. That St. Strong is a little bit hard to time, but not super hard. It's always weird to see like a really good Necro miss it. And then they get like six back down back faces in a row, which is crazy hard. That feels like one frame. It feels very precise. And it doesn't work on that many characters. Sugiyama's like a scientist with this character. Um, I did two patch notes videos, and I'll put them on YouTube as soon as I kill the stream. I just read the list and voice my opinions. I'll do patch notes like... Uh, like change list videos once the game comes out. I'll like show off the changes live. And then I'll have B Trigger 2 BNBs. And just new BNBs in general. If the character received a significant change to their BNBs, which some characters did. Laura will have new combos that actually matter. All my BNB videos are basically going out the window with this new game. The damage values for a lot of shit is going to change. And the optimal combos is going to change. And the V Trigger 2 is going to change. I've got a lot of work to do, basically. A lot of stuff needs to get affected. I could basically, and considering I can get paid for each one, by sure you can ferry it easily. Um, I've got a lot of, I got a lot of income I can make, I guess. I'm not super geared up, if you know what I mean. I'm not really anticipating it pleasantly. I mean, I'm good at it. In terms of just like a quality, the the BNB videos are some of the most useful videos I make, if not the most useful. They're like my most popular videos by a long shot. I guess I'll start with Ryu, because a lot of people are probably going to be looking at him. I guess I'll just do it by character popularity. I might do it by I might look at my existing BNB videos and do it by how many views each one has or something. Let's compare him. Sadokan use is working out. It's pretty late. I should probably be asleep in bed, especially since one of my friends is free tomorrow and I might want to try and hang out with him. I don't think I'm going to watch this whole video. It's kind of fun to check it out, though. Electricity doesn't have a super good hitbox in this game. I'm not really afraid of it at all. Nice. It does quite a lot of damage. Especially if you get like a um, hard spin hook into hard electricity. The electricity will get 5 hits on some characters. And like 4 on others. And it's quite strong. Highest meaningless damage. Yeah, I've done a whole lot of nothing for the Shoryuken channel. So, like, the chance to do a whole lot of something sounds kind of good. Does second V-Trigger change your B-Skill? Usually, no. There's only a few examples of it doing that. And they're, like, very specific. 
certain V skills have like an additional effect in V trigger, and that changes based on V trigger one or V trigger two. Your V skill is always the same base V skill. If your V skill changes in V trigger, which it does for a few characters, like for example, it already changes in V trigger for Nikali right now, or like Geef, or like characters like that. Um, some of the effects, some of the changes of the V skill are V trigger specific. Like Fong in V trigger one, his uh, V skill will have a uh, an actual hitbox and do like real the opponent. But Fong and V Trigger 2 will not do that. That was not a punish throw, or else it would have been a back throw. Necro has a special throw when he grabs someone from behind. He does lots and lots of damage, the most of any throw in this game. Next is like Hugo's neutral throw if you get all the hits. And then it's like a hole, it's a really big tie. When you parry their attack and they cancel the super anyway and it beats you. Shittiest feeling. Their loops are like mostly gone. So like it's okay to be weak to them. Cute little juggle. Does that work? You get a juggle the other way. But I've never seen the opponent bounce off in that action. I've never seen a juggle into uh back hard kick. He did it so confidently that I believe that it works. Minus two, no matter the stage makes sense. Fuck off. Should have always been like that. I'm afraid of Abigail in the current version of the game we have right now. They don't need to do anything in Abigail to make me afraid of him, and said they're buffing him. I don't care about hearing the difference, although that is annoying. I just think it's dumb as fuck to have like a fucking turn punch with all this invincibility and then it's like plus six on block. It's like, how about no? I know you have to charge it for a long time, but shit. It's like do turn punch, no possible downside. I like the idea that at least turn punch surrenders your turn if they block it. Abigail's like slept on, I feel, right now. I don't know if he's that bad or that good. I don't know that much about him. Well, I know a decent amount about him, but I don't know how... Um, I can't make like a really critical analysis of his tier. But to me, he's like pretty scary. He's like, he has like really... um. He has, he has, like, really significant weaknesses, I feel. Like, he has to work really hard to deal with other things that other characters deal with for free because of his very lackluster jump and his very tall body and his, uh, uh, very slow normals and his iffy anti -airs. He's got a lot of, he's got a lot of stuff where he has to think really hard about shit that other characters do for free. Zipboxes are real nice though. 
He's got a nice mix up. The run stuff is actually pretty cool. His damage is through the fucking roof. It's not that hard to land it back fierce fierce. That's the thing about him. There's actually a decent number of fucking opportunities. It's not like only your V-Trigger activation combo or like only a crush counter or something like that. You can get it off of a fucking V-Trigger EX command grab. That's not so uncommon. It's actually very easy to land. For how rewarding it is, you would think back fierce would be very uncommon, but it's only somewhat uncommon. Maybe you get a crumple stand fierce. Not like that's common. But that leads to a butt ton of damage. <laughs> Love that juggle. I don't, I don't mind Abigail. Well, I, I don't know. I need to play him more to know if I mind him. But the one I do like that he has like significant weaknesses. I don't feel Zingy's weaknesses when I fight him. I don't really feel Birdie's weaknesses when I fight him. They're better rounded. Abigail, I do feel his weaknesses. I feel like I have a bunch of stuff that I can exploit, even though he has a bunch of stuff like to use. The only characters where I actually feel their weaknesses while I'm fighting them are like Dalsim and Abigail. I mean, obviously I can feel weaknesses in the sense of like, you know, if a character does or doesn't have a 3 frame normal. Or like if a character doesn't do so and so X well. Very, very simple. Not simple, but like very, very precise things. But like... Characters like, well, specifically Sim and Abigail have very general, sweeping, encompassing weaknesses. Damn, that was a good round for Ken. Good match. I thought Street Fighter V's netcode was garbage, and then I got a better computer, and now I think it's okay. It's not the best of any fighting game I've played. Not even close. I'm not even sure it's anywhere as good as Street Fighter IV's. I don't like the one-sided rollback. I gotta say that. That's horrible. But for the most part, I get full-speed games, so... Not a big issue. For me. I don't mind Street Fighter V. I don't think it's a bad game. It feels like everyone's saying that. I, no, I don't think it's a bad game right now. I don't think it was a bad game during Season 1. It's fine. It's a fun game. Most of my gripes relating to it are gripes relating to myself. Although there's some things about it I like a lot. Monster Ken is pretty good. It's not like I thought I expected Sugiyama to like tear through or anything. So much would I rather have the lag in Street Fi in Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite than Street Fighter V. Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite already like seems to rarely lag, but when it lags, it just stutters for both players, which is how I'm used to dealing with lag. Love that combo. Yeah, you have to do a lot of parrying. That's a punish. 
I thought that was just safe. I guess nothing. A lot of stuff that is safe is unsafe against Ken. That looked like a punish too. He did it so confidently. I thought that was a safe attack. Oro can't punish it with like shit. That could be a, just an Oro weakness. Oro is really bad at hitting the opponent quickly mid screen. That's like his one of his biggest downsides as a character. All of Oro's attacks are pretty slow. Except like close forward and his lights, which are shitty. Oro has like really shitty lights, actually. They're some of the shittiest of any character. Crouch jab does almost nothing. Stand jab is used for resets and ticks, I guess. Close short is used for resets and ticks, I guess. Well, not really resets, but ticks, I guess. And it has a TC, which is the technically the strongest damage you can get after a jump medium kick on a standing opponent in most contexts. Um, and low short doesn't do anything. It's low. You can do it during Tengu stuff. His lights are good during Tengu. But mostly his lights are really, really shit. You don't have any combos from any lights. That's like a big thing. Oro has like no combos from lights anywhere. All his special moves except Onyama are too slow to combo from lights. And none of his supers have a hit on the initial like frames. That's like a weakness of Aura that's not often discussed. But like most lights in this game are really bad. This isn't a lights based game. So having bad lights is not a big deal. Aura doesn't suffer that much for his weakness. More of a character defect than anything else. It feels like a deliberate decision. That's why he has the fucking light kick medium kick TC. That's why it's actually useful. It would be useless on any other character. I wouldn't call it useful. But that's why it exists. That was their intended purpose for it. Here's a fucking completion from Light Normal. Here's a light kick into medium kick. There's your completion. Enjoy. Enjoy the damage of a medium. He did that like a punish and it worked. I think it's just a thing Oro can't do. Oro can't punish that uh, low grab. I can't think of anything I would do to punish it. Sweep is t probably too slow and also not far enough. The forward is probably not far enough, but it might be fast enough. Stand strong is probably too slow. Stand forward is too slow. Stand run is too slow. Low strong is probably too slow and probably doesn't go far enough and has no completion on hit anyway. Low strong has such really high pushback. It's a really stupid normal. It like would be a good normal. It cancels. But it just has really insanely high pushback. And the high pushback means you can't do anything. I'm not even sure if point blank low strong into Onyama combos or if it just pushes out too far. Makes it fall out. Very, very point blank uh, low strong combos into command grab. But there's no point to do that because stand forward does more damage and low forward starts from a low. Low strong does neither. Um. Ooh, nice parry. Low strong into fireball doesn't combo. Or his fireball is too slow to combo from any of his cancels. Stand strong into fireball doesn't combo. Well, it does if it's like one of the few characters where you can do the juggle. Stand forward into fireball doesn't combo. Low strong into fireball doesn't combo. Oro has no cancelable heavies. Low fierce cancels to super only, not to special moves. Stand Fierce doesn't cancel, Stand Runhouse doesn't cancel, Low Runhouse doesn't cancel, Oro has no close heavy anywhere. That's not an uncommon thing in this game to have no cancelable heavies. It sucks, but it's not uncommon. Shoto's and Twins and Remy are like the characters with like combo friendly normals. And then everyone else has like weird normals. That's the back throw. That's the strongest throw in the game. It's his normal throw. It just has a special animation and extra damage if you back throw. I think if you get like a back turn heavy punch and land if you land or if you land Necro's hit grab where he like grabs your feet, um, and the opponent is back turned, it takes priority to give you uh the back throw. And also you can't combo a on back turn you can't combo a normal throw. 
but you can combo a command grab. Like uh, Ibuki's Jump Fierce combos to like uh, Super 2, which is a throw, but it doesn't combo to normal throw. Back turns combo to special throws only in this game. And I think there's some context where uh, Necro can get like a ha heavy hammer hook on like a crouching opponent or something like that. Or it might always work, I don't know. And then he can do the low grab and it will come out as a the the, the special back throw. Like the low grab combos because it's a back turn opponent and it's a special move grab. But then it plays the animation of a normal grab because the normal grab, the special grab becomes a normal grab in that context where the normal grab does more damage. It's kind of a weird, cute little combo. Combo video stuff. There's a lot of stuff you can do after a heavy hammer hook, and that's not a particularly good ender. I don't play Necro, so like I, I don't know if that's possible. But even if it is possible, you probably wouldn't do it, because in a real match you've got better stuff you can do. Uh, Alex, is, Alex doesn't have a... Alex has... Um, Alex's command grab turns into a special command grab, and his back fierce turns into a special back fierce. But um, Alex doesn't have a normal throw that does a special back turn animation. But yes, Alex can do. Two of Alex's throws have new animations on back turn that do way more damage. Technically, four of Alex's throws. The final throw of Super 2 has a new animation on back turn, and Super 2 always causes back turn, so you always get it, except in very random contexts where only the final hit of Super 2 connects. Um, Super 1 gets a new animation on back turn opponents, and then command grab and then back fierce. Alex has four attacks with special animations on back turn. And they're all way more rewarding. I don't know, sleeper hold is kind of weird. It's a mash show, and it does really, really high stun, but um, they can shake out of it. And so they'll probably end up taking less stun than just back fierce raw. And also probably less damage. So you'd rather have just raw back fierce. But most people when they land the back turn they just do the half circle back punch. What characters would you add slash remove? I'm not going to remove a character. What the fuck? Um, I had this question recently and I don't remember what I said. I said poison would be kind of cool. Since she's already done a model. And Poison hasn't been in that many games, so they could be kind of creative with her. Poison would be one I want. Poison's been in more games than um, El Forte. Been in more games than Goken. Oh, give him the lick! Poison's been in more games than Seth. More games than Hakan. Huh, where's the cancel? New combo to Electric Snake is going to dizzy. Ken has to play really careful. He's still like, it's there it is. This should stun. Yeah, get for meme combos. Don't fucking remove 12, just buff him. What the fuck? Why would you delete 12? 12 is cool. 12 is one of the coolest characters in this whole game. He just sucks. I like Fong. Fong would be a good addition to this game. He might suck. He might be like Remy. Poison would be kind of neat to add. Like poison as an effect, not poison as the character. Um, uh, Fong seems to be... I don't know, Fong ambiguously like dies in Street Fighter V's story. He probably doesn't die, but you know. He does get kind of fucked up. I seem to recall he falls off something and disappears. Or maybe he falls off something and disappears and reappears. I don't remember. I don't remember what happens to Fong. But he wouldn't be a terrible candidate for like a big bad of Shadaloo. If Shadaloo still exists, which it probably doesn't. Bison dies. Nash dies. 
There's at least two characters that die. Rashid's friend dies. R.I.P. Rashid's friend. I'd actually like Ed being set up as the new leader of Shadaloo. That'd be kind of cute. I actually don't want that. What I want to happen is I want Barog to be like I want out of this game. That's like my ideal ideal direction. I want Balrog to discover fatherhood and be like, fuck this evil shit. I want to go live with my son. Good lord, I didn't know that. I mean, I figured Bison would come back since he's a staple. And since literally it's lore that he comes back. But, you know. I didn't realize it was already in the game. Nash might come back too, to be honest. Not so sure about Rashid's friend, though. That looks like a punish. He's a white thing that acts like an animal. I think that's cool. Changing his body shape based on his needs is cool. Street Fighter 3 is Street Fighter 6, and Bison's nowhere to be seen. Did the laptop doll die? I seem to recall she got pretty fucked up. Did she, like, fall off something? Maybe she was the one that fell off something. I don't know the doll's names. I just know they're all months. I know No and Blue. I know Julie and Julie and DiCaprio. That's all I got. Okay, just because, like, Geef isn't in this game doesn't mean Geef's dead. Okay. It'd be kind of weird if they just kill off most of the cast. They pulled an MK9 and just had a scene where everyone died. <laughs> that would be, like, so out of place. It's like, oh, it's only Ryu, Kanakuma, and Chun-Li because everyone else is deceased. Basically, Bison sent, like, a powered-up fucking uh, jury after everyone, and she just killed everyone. <laughs> That'd be, like, ridiculously out of place. Didn't I say I wouldn't watch all this? It's nearly over. Let's watch it all. I think Matsukin's gonna win. Seeing as it's the first to ten, and Matsukin's at nine, and there's only three minutes left. Bison has definitively died in Alpha 3, and he's definitively died in ST. So, Bison dying in Street Fighter 5 is actually his third death. And I think Retsu's still alive.
Everyone wrecks bison at the end of Alpha 3. Literally every single character's ending is them killing bison. Yeah, Raul Julia counts as one of Bison's deaths, actually. Movie Bison. Street Fighter the movie, the game Bison definitively dies. It's like kind of two deaths, because the character in the movie died. And then the actor died. It's like a double die. This must be fifth body bison. It's looking grim. Matsukin's in a good position to win this whole thing. Oh, there it is. Who's going to parry that? Not me. Higa versus Ricky Mario. Let's watch one match from this. If I watch more than one, stop me. I just saw Ibuki in the thumb. And I was like, Chun Li versus Ibuki is kind of cool. I'm fairly certain that Ibuki, Chun Li is Ibuki's worst matchup. And one of the main reasons is that Chun Li is very small and Ibuki hates small opponents. Ibuki can't do her punch TC at all on crouching Chun Li because close jab whiffs and therefore it's impossible to combo into uh, stand strong. That's annoying, but it's not a huge deal, but it's annoying. Yeah, Boogie has the tools to compete here. Probably a 6-4, Chun-Li's favor. It's not a bad match. Well, it is, but it's not like, you know, you live. Pretty sure it's Ibuki's worst match, though. Chun-Li's good in general. He did all five. That might have been punishable. Five is minus quite a lot if the opponent's close to you. Three is, like, always safe. I'm not even 100% sure if Ibuki can get, do 4 reps. It seems like every Ibuki does either unmashed or fully mashed. I just had a sick idea for a game. I was about to say they should have a Street Fighter set in the far future with Gal and Chun Li's kid out of wedlock. Gal cheated on his wife with Chun Li. And then I was like, wait a second. Let's have a Street Fighter game set in the future where it's every single character's kid with Chun Li. Dude, how fucking perfect would that be? It's like the Shoto is like Ryu and Chun Li's son. And then like the fucking. I don't know. That's like a Guile-ish character that's like, like Chun-Li and Guile's daughter. And then there's like a Rufus-ish character that's like Chun-Li and Rufus's son. Dude, they should actually do that. How perfect would that be? How amazing. <laughs> and just completely not state that Chun-Li like... Just like say but not say that Chun-Li slept with every character and had kids. How to ruin Chun Li's character in one fast step. <laughs> they just do it with a hundred percent like a straight face. Nice parry, nice punish. Suddenly he's like the, the one character they wouldn't ever do that. That's why it's glorious. Aw oh, damn, Chun-Li just did Chun-Li shit. Fuck this game. 
Did I watch two? I feel like I watched two. Damn it, dude, I did watch two. No one stopped me. I'm going to bed.